So, for anybody who missed it, Jay Vine from Alpha Phoenix won today's stage of the Vuelta. Jay is relevant here because he got his contract with Alpha through the Zwift Academy two years ago. Uh, he had been an Australian Pro Conti Pro before that. Zwift Academy was what got him that step from the Australian Peloton up into the Pro Peloton. Today was his first win. He's had a lot of second places, especially on mountaintop finishes. Today's stage was a mountaintop finish. But I saw today's stage and I immediately thought, this will be cool to look at for two reasons. One is that I know Jay Vine posts all of his data all the time. So all of his power numbers and stuff are here. And Jay has a Zwift history so we can go check out his Zwift power too, see what he was doing in Zwift races back in 2020 when he really got into that. This is today's stage, stage six of the Vuelta 2022. You see the profile right here, several little peaks, and then we got a summit finish right here. So I think people are always curious, like what does it take to win one of these races? Final climb, it looks like the version of the climb they used in today's stage is not really its own standalone segment. You can see up at the top there when I've got one of these segments clicked, this uh, portion here highlighted, that's what we're looking at. He did 439 watts for 17 flat. I think that's not even the most impressive thing he did. It looks like most of these times are from today. He was 24 seconds to the better of Remco Evanpole, which is insane. Remco Evanpole is clearly a genetic freak and maybe the next like Wout Van Aert or Matthew Vanderpoel handily taking down the KOMs on that final. So this is the Strava Sauce plugin. It's a browser plugin that lets you get into the data a little bit deeper on Strava. It automatically pulls the best. If you're used to Zwift, you're used to seeing that critical power curve at the end. Kind of does something similar here. So he did two minutes at almost 500 watts and it automatically gives you these uh, values based on the Coggin chart. So a cat two effort over two minutes, cat one effort over five minutes, 474 UCI pro effort. So basically for five minutes and 10 minutes, almost the exact same, hardly any drop off between those durations. And then even up to 20 minutes, UCI world tour level. I've never even seen that icon on a, uh, Strava sauce before, 449 watts for 20 minutes. That's 6.1 watts a kilo for 20 minutes. So let's look at these climbs. Looks like the first climb, he was only having to do about 4.3 watts a kilo, which is pedaling hard, but not for those guys. It's not, not anything beyond the pale. Second climb, and this is the cool thing about Strava sauce tool. I can sit here and just look at the, uh, look at the profile and pick out what I want to see. So steep part of the second climb, 4.7 for 20 minutes. He basically did almost as good as I could do, like on a, on a great day for 20 minutes. And he did that beginning two hours into the stage, basically. He did what would be like a, a power best for me as like a cat two, uh, a decent cat two. Little ramp there. Ooh, almost five watts a kilo again. That one, he's three hours in. 5.7, 5.7 watts a kilo for 15 minutes. That's beginning three and a half hours into the stage. And this is not even the one that won him the race. This was just to stay in that group. So after having done those four efforts, final climb, look at this power line. So this right here is where he decides to attack, get a little gap on that group. Once he's gotten that gap, he just locks it in perfectly. I mean, he stays right in the mid 400s for so let's see from from his attack to the finish that little ramp right there of power that's his attack and then he's settling down into his effort at 23 minutes basically just locks it right into 450 watts he knew exactly where he wanted to go he knew 450 is what i can maintain and if you look at this the only spots that uh his power drops off his cadence also drops off which makes me think those were probably some tiny descents and or sharp corners. That is some extremely even pacing. Oh, let's look at the overall. Four hours and 50 minutes, 257 watt average for four hours and 50 minutes. But his normalized is 321. So his normalized power, almost 30 watts more than my FTP, but he did that for four hours and 50 minutes. 
That's the difference between a local fast guy and a world tour pro. Now let's see what he was doing on Zwift back when he was doing that. 5.7 watts a kilo. Yeah, this is a Zwift race where there were six guys in it, but it's looking from that power. He did 5.7, next closest guy. Yeah, he just pulled the field for a solid, a solid race. He pulled the field around and then still won the sprint, it looks like, because we got very similar finish times. But yeah, okay, here are the Zwift Academy rides where Jay was chosen. So Jay was doing a bunch of Zwifting before Zwift Academy popped up. This is all pre-Zwift Academy here and putting up insane numbers, regularly over five watts a kilo for the full duration of a race, which those are shorter races, but that's still nuts. And then here are the Zwift Academy races that got him on to Alpecin. So pretty cool that you can just go back and look at this stuff. Let's see, ooh, this one's on, on Richmond UCI. So he won this race. Crazy one minute power, 8.3 watts a kilo. As goofy as some people may think it is, I think for someone who is not coming from Europe, there are very few pathways into the world tour. So the fact that he was able to see Swift Academy as a potential pathway, capitalize it, get in, get in there, and then win a stage of the Vuelta, it's pretty awesome.